from Brown Academy to the Smithsonian National Air and Space Museum, Stephen F. Udvahazy Center, Chantilly, Virginia. So here's a little brief map of where you'll be going and what you'll be doing. Uh, you'll have that on a handout uh, anyway. And you're going at the entrance, stay on that level and turn uh, left to go towards the uh, shop and McDonald's but you're not going in there yet so you see number one already uh, it's what you will look at and you'll be looking at uh, the level equal with you slightly above you to look at uh, number one and when you finish that uh, make sure you look down on number two and then also, the stairs will be behind you. So number one, the Aerodrome A. Before the Wright brothers actually flew, there were quite a few prototype trial airplanes, and this is one of them. And you'll see a little bit more about the history if you, you view the video that's there. Uh, it was launched uh, from a houseboat catapult launched and that's probably the best picture that you'll see of it because uh, it did uh, tend to collapse. And you're being asked, what is the airplane made of? And uh, to look and see if you can find the, the fuel tank and draw a picture of that. Uh, and then, before you go down the stairs, look at the airplane, uh, the Quadrant G4 a French World War I uh, bomber, and it's got a 45-foot uh, wingspan, about 15 meters, and Miss Leahy's great-great-uncle uh, uh, flew also in World War I, but in a British bomber uh, with a 100-foot wingspan, so more than twice that of the Cauldron uh, G4. And then we'll look at some skydiving, uh, where Al Eustace went up in uh, a spacesuit. And it was really his spacesuit that he was traveling up in and that he uh, free fell down when he disconnected from his, uh, his balloon. And um, asking, what do you think you would hear as you descended? And what would you see from 25 miles high and then maybe from 10 miles high, five, what about one mile high? An airliner uh, flies at about seven, seven miles high. Uh, then you're going to go uh, beyond uh, the ballooning section to helicopter, called it helicopter corner, and you're going to choose a helicopter that you like, and you're going to sketch and put your ne put the name of the helicopter by, by your sketch. Make sure you put a good amount of detail on there. Uh, and then you're going back down the center of the museum. You'll go under Concord, and on your left, you'll see uh, quite a shiny, shiny aircraft. Um, and uh, that's the first pressurized commercial airliner. So it meant that you could travel above the turbulence, or most of it, uh, for a much smoother flight. And um, as you walk down and look around, what other aircraft would you like to see polished like this one? So look for that and then name it. And then nearly opposite the Boeing 307 is the Boeing 707 uh, prototype. At the time, it was called the 367-80, and they just called it the Dash 80. So perhaps not colors they would choose now, um, but I'm asking you what is the angle between the wing and the fuselage. You see it on the diagram here. And as... Um, test pilot uh, during a commercial demonstration actually barrel rolled. So it's not a loop-the-loop -loop 
nose up all the way around. Uh, it's just a gentle sideways and turn upside down and then go back to um, a normal straight and level flight. And you can see that on the video as well. And then I thought you might like to look at the flying wing. Fairly chunky for a wing. Um, and wonder what it might have felt like to be in the cockpit. So you might be able to describe a few things and you can look at the, uh, the, the cockpit window that uh, the pilot has um, and write down two or three things that you might have felt if you were, were flying uh, that airplane. And then center of the museum, the crossroads, you've got the SR-71 Black, Blackbird. And it traveled across the US about uh, just over an hour, uh, but it took off without being fully fueled um, and was refueled. And so the flight is really measured in time after that refueling to go from the west coast near LA to uh, near Washington DC in just over an hour. Uh, why do you think the airplane can fly quite as fly fast as that? So here we have the loon uh, chosen because Grace likes the feathery types of loon. Uh, World War II German V1 bomb. This was rebuilt, uh, designed, from that, the V1 um, in the US, and uh, uh, we're going to see if, how your stride measurement goes uh, because it's about 27 uh, feet long, which will be about 14 not excessive strides, and you can see if you can you can walk in 14 the length outside the barrier. Those certainly you can't go inside the barrier. And number 10 is Space Shuttle. And this was just behind the hangar that you're standing in now. And uh, one of them is the Discovery that you'll see that has uh, flown multiple times into space. The other one was a test shuttle that was released uh, from uh, an aircraft at... Um, about 25,000 feet, and so just became a glider to landing, just as the real space shuttle did after re-entry from its mission into space. Can you tell which one is the Enterprise, the test um, shuttle, and which one was Discovery? I think you probably can. Now, the Enterprise was at the museum for, for many years, and then Discovery was brought in, uh, piggybacked on uh, a Boeing 747 jumbo jet. Landed at Dulles, just next door to Udvahazi Center. Uh, and here's Discovery uh, taking off. And uh, I want you to think as you look at the Discovery on display in the museum, and give three differences between uh, the discovery that you're looking at and the one that has been launched uh, from the Kennedy Space Center in Florida. And then just to the left of the nose of the uh, discovery, you'll see the Apollo 11 flotation devices. Um, the early spacecraft that uh, uh, landed sometimes turned upside down, everything else. And so they devised these two different uh, sections, the spheres at the top and then the ring around it. Um, and I'm just wondering for you to uh, draw flotation devices for this uh, spacecraft. Um, that's a Soyuz and actually only the top end landed and landed on, lands on the ground. Uh, but just for this exercise, how would you design flotation devices? You can draw them on uh, for a spacecraft at that time. As you come out of the space hangar, go left 
uh, go right to the end of that um, aisle, and on the right side at the end, you'll see an F35. Uh, now, Miss Leahy's father was part of the design team uh, who uh, worked on the F35, the sort of cutting edge uh, uh, fighter airplane um, in the US that's now in service. Um, and interestingly enough, um, it says uh, whose names are written uh, near the cockpit. One of them, Simon Hargreaves, uh, actually used to work with Miss Leahy's father as well in 899 Squadron. She might tell you a little bit about, uh, about that too. Uh, so there's uh, lots more to, to see and do. Um, as you were going round, did you see cartoons, artwork um, on airplanes? And um, uh, were there any that had impactful colors? And then to think, um, when I come back to the Harthi Center, I'd like to find out about which artifact. It may be um, space toys. It may be uh, space, space and aviation clothing. It may be more about aviation art. Uh, but thank you for visiting the Harthi Center Brown Academy and have a safe trip back.